What's up, y'all? Sparta here. And um, for this video, I guess what I really want to talk about is V60 successor. So it may not be a real surprise that LG is most likely not going to have another V-series phone after this. This is pretty much going to be the last one. The G8 successor technically was the Velvet. <laughs> um, the V60 was the last one they decided to put out this year in terms of V-series. And the main reason I want to talk about this, and apologies for the bad lighting, um, is because there are quite a, there's quite a bit of things that I'm hopeful for and that I have less of an... I, I have the least amount of like concern for when it comes to say the next LG powerhouse phone and let's talk about this so with with this potential V60 successor what I want to talk or V series successor overall what I hope LG doesn't get what I hope LG doesn't you know get rid of is the overall DNA of what makes a V-series phone what it is, right? Now, it isn't just headphone jack, obviously that is it, but there's stuff like video capabilities overall, like say, how much of a powerhouse this phone is in terms of video rendering, in terms of say, video capabilities, in terms of camera overall, the display, there's a lot of stuff about this phone that is important that I would like to see with this next phone. And obviously to get out the way, hi-fi quad DAC, headphone jack, I hope they keep that. Because honestly, while they could just give us a dongle and maybe have a quad DAC in it, I would much prefer to have a headphone jack mainly because it's easier. <laughs> like I have a dongle for my iPhone that I got and it works good. It powers, say, my HD 650s decently, but it doesn't do it the way it doesn't do it the way the V60 does. And that's just something that I hope that they keep. And I just hope they add other modes, like more, you know, manual kind of like audio, you know, modes where you can say kick up the power if you want to, for say lower impedance headphones like say for example my 10 p1s are not higher than 50 ohms so they don't really the v60 won't power them properly without me doing like putting in an adapter plugging in the um <laughs> plugging in the p1s and then after i start playing the music and then the power kicks in on the p1s and since p2s just got announced and i'm probably not getting them anytime soon like 340 dollars. i'm not doing that yet but the short tape pros got announced and those are literally the same price as the tapes i'm definitely getting those but i don't really have to worry about those being powered it's just something that um i want to see more and it's just something that's really nice other things that i don't want to see them go away with Manual video controls. Now, obviously, they're not going to do that because it's LG. <laughs> like, they've been... The one phone they didn't have... The, technically, there's been two phones that haven't had. The G5 didn't have manual video controls. And the Velvet doesn't have manual video controls. But the Wing does. And it could literally do every sort of, like... It's just as capable in 4K60 mode as the V60... It just doesn't have the it doesn't have the capabilities to do 8K, which 8K whatever fine, but don't lose this DNA LG. This is what makes me stick to your phones quite a bit. Like it's simple, it's easy to use. Sure, I can go to a Sony, but I would rather ha I would still want to keep an LG in my pocket because I've been using them since the G2. So. Having manual photo and video modes are fantastic for people that actually want to use their phones and learn how to use their phones. It's something that's really nice. So yeah, keep that. <sighs> Next, keep leveraging these chipsets the way you do. The V60, in terms of 4K video rendering, 
from what I've seen and like say some gadget guys benchmarks and stuff like that on Power Director, which is the app I use to render my video, it beats out the Note 20 Ultra. The like it it just does. And in other metrics, they're pretty much tied or the or the Note 20 Ultra ekes it out a little bit, but overall in terms of what I use this phone for, the V60 does better in 4K video rendering. And to me, that's very nice. It beats out the iPhone 11 Pro Max as well. I tested that. I'm actually going to make a video on that <laughs> because that's really interesting. You know, the claims that Apple likes to make, oh, the only phone that beats our previous phone is our next phone. And it's not true, but fine. Um, Yeah, but overall, like I said, keep leveraging these powerful chipsets. Don't go to 765, please. Or, you know, whatever the next mid-ranger chip is, please stick with the 875, whatever they, whatever Snapdragon decides to do next year. Because to me, a, v, a V-series phone is about power. Sure, the first V-series had the Snapdragon 808, but that was just due to the time, right? <laughs> like, the Snapdragon 810 was the Snapdragon 810. That's kind of how we refer to this, the Galaxy Note 7, right? The Note 7 was the Note 7. So, yeah. Um, another thing, bring back other certain features. Like, the V10 had this, like, audio separation thing where you, you connect Bluetooth headphones and then you connect a hardware pair, pair of headphones to your phone and it acts as a headphone splitter. That way, someone could if say you want to listen to music and you also want someone else to listen to music at the same time with you, you can do that. I wish that was still here. It's not, sadly, but that would be very nice. A quad HD display would be nice. I'm not one that would say, oh, it's needed. This phone definitely shows it's not needed. So if you don't do that, fine. At least 90 hertz would be cool i don't really care but for those who would like to complain at it one thing i definitely would like to see is the 108 megapixel sensor that samsung uses because this 64 megapixel sensor lg uses is a samsung isocell sensor so it would be nice to see them go to that 18 108 megapixel sensor if they wanted to if they stick with 64 that would be nice this is still a great sensor this hardware is very nice, so I don't really mind it. But it would just be nice to see that <laughs> going forward. Mm, I guess other things bring back IR Blaster. Obviously, a lot of these things are probably already set in motion. So me making recommendations is kind of stupid. But IR Blaster would be nice. Removable battery, maybe. I don't see them doing it. But, you know, it would be nice if they brought that back. Please keep dual screen because this thing is really nice. This thing makes this phone into the powerhouse that it is. Like, you put this in your phone, you're basically using the most powerful Nintendo DS you could ever use. Not only that... But you could also, it's also essentially a mini laptop. And it just feels very nice to use. And it's just very quality. I don't have any sort of lag or anything with it, any stutters. The only time I do is when I'm running the phone very hard, which makes sense, right? You're leveraging the Snapdragon 865 to power dual two displays and say, play two different games at once. That's a lot of, sh that's a lot of stuff to do there. So yeah. Um, overall though, in terms of the dual screen case, I would like to see this cut out a little bit wider so I don't have to use adapters with my other headphones. With my HD 650s, it's a must because the, um, the adapt, the, um, the headphone jack thing is a bit loose, so that's fine with me. Not the headphone jack on the phone, but the connector on the HD 650 is loose. I need to get a replacement cable for it, but that act that um adapter actually works very well and I don't have any issues with it. Overall though, I guess that's pretty much it. What else would you guys like to see? 
Keep the massive battery. That's very nice. Up the fast charging a little bit. An hour and a half is good. It's very good, especially for a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. But if you guys can get it to an hour and still have it be efficient, that would be nice. Um, thermal cooling. I still don't know if this phone has thermal cooling, but it stays really cool. So maybe it does. Like, there's a lot of things about this phone that I really do like. Um, if you do keep the dual screen case, do it like you're doing on the velvet where you have this matte surface on the front with the visor. That's better rather than just a full glass or a full glass panel on the front. One, it's a fingerprint magnet. Two, it's not durable. Therefore, I don't really use it while I'm at work. <laughs> so yeah, that would be nice. But overall, that's really it. Um, like I said, let me know in the comment section below what you guys would like to see with the belt, the next, the V-series successor, whatever it may be. Um, have a good one.